Hey folks, I'm Marcel, back with you with The Pulse, and I'm still in California, mixed yesterday a new song, mastering on Monday, uh, visiting a potential band member, a musician today to take on the road with me. We're looking for a few more, so I'll continue that search. And uh, I wanted to comment with you, I did an interview, a three-hour interview yesterday for the Jerry Wills Show. Jerry and Kathy Wills have a podcast that they've had for, I don't know, it's like 10 years, long time. And he's a longtime uh, student of uh, health, of our health, and his own health. He's 70 years old, and he knows uh, biological terms, uh, terminology, and conditions even much better than I, for both men and women, very fascinating. And he's very into, you know, getting your testosterone levels up and how estrogen is made from testosterone for women, which Fonda Wright has talked about. So I'm trying to connect those two guys to discuss this further together. Um, but what I found interesting, uh, well, there were many things that were interesting. Jerry saw this podcast a little over a year ago and He's been doing this a while. He's been doing self-care, you know, longer than I have. And he's been involved with this for quite a while and getting his testosterone levels up and checking different levels. And so he sees me and he goes, well, here's just a guy, right? And I see the results. And he's looking at the pictures and he's listening to me and it clicked for him. You know, this protocol makes sense to him. So what does he do? He doesn't take my advice and do things slowly, methodically, one at a time, because I'd already done that, right? He goes all in, which is a different approach than many people. It's even not what I recommend necessarily for you guys, because you won't know what every little thing is doing if you just simply dive, you know, both head, both feet in into the pool. But that's what he did. And he got the results. He's getting the results I'm getting. He feels the way I feel. He's getting the focus. He's falling asleep 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night when he used to stay up till three and couldn't sleep and had to take various things to help him sleep. So he's getting similar results that I'm getting. And he just dove in. And this, and you know, I asked him, I said, what are you taking? Well, he's taking two grams of NMN. Well, he's 10 years older than me. So, you know, okay. Yeah, I think it's an aggressive, but I think uh, probably for him an appropriate approach. I think you need to find your level of NMN if you're going to take NMN. He's taking all do not age supplements. Okay, yeah, I think that's um, you know that's the route to take, right? Um, because it's a centralized plan. They do a lot of research, and he goes, these things work. I've taken even some of these from other places. I feel better about these. So he's going with results, both from myself and from his own experience. Now, I don't care where you get your results. Could be your doctor, could be me. As a matter of fact, you know, one thing I want to talk about today is getting doctors on board with self-care. Uh, we need a centralized plan. Everyone's looking for a centralized plan, even Jerry. Like, give me a plan. I'll try your plan. If it works for me, I got my centralized plan. Um, we go to our doctors waiting to be told what to do because we want a centralized plan. And that has positive and negative effects. So what David Seclair called whack-a-mole medicine, right? They'll treat this thing. But medicine has become so diversified decentralized, segmented, specialized is the word they use a lot, that you have to see this doctor, then you see this doctor. So if you got three conditions, you got three doctors. And if doctor one gives you a medication, it could inflame condition number two. So you go to doctor number two and he says, oh, you're taking that? Well, take this. So oftentimes he'll adjust your prescription option you know, based on something that's happening at doctor number one. Hopefully they're talking to each other. You're probably the best conduit between your doctors. You have to relay the messages. You, ultimately, are your centralized plan. Whether it's self-care, whether it's supplements, 
whether it's health and exercise, diet and exercise, no matter what it is, whether you're dealing with the rotisserie doctor options, right? You're just rotating doctors. I think that we need to understand that there may be a better approach. There probably is a better approach. I'm not saying my approach is right. There are different levels of working. You know, you have to decide. Doctors are successful at keeping people alive. We're living longer. But are you alive to survive? Are you in great shape? Are you doing well? Are you feeling great? I mean, my goal isn't necessarily to live a long, long time, although I'd like to live a long time, but it's, I've never talked about life extension. I've talked about health span extension. You know, what does it matter if you're 82 if you can't walk out, go for a walk, if you can't, you know, play with your grandkids, if you can't be productive, you can't have a productive, fun, enjoyable life. You know, if you're on that managed decline that I've talked about that starts at 45, 50, different ages for different people. Some people never really go through it, which is awesome. There is a minority out there that just feels great. They've got great genes, they've eaten well, they exercise well, and they don't, you know, pursue uh, alternative means. But most of us do decline in NED levels and various other molecular levels in our body, biological levels that decrease over time. And we are finding that we can boost those, both semi-artificially by taking natural ingredients more than we would get in our food supply and certainly diet and exercise. So why doesn't your doctor recommend these things if they work? That's a good question. That's a question I have. Many people have. Ultimately, doctors are the guys holding that pad of prescription papers. You know, they've got a, a notepad full of blank prescriptions. Historically, now they use computers and assistants. But the same thing, you know, you go in with a condition, they write you a prescription, out you go to the pharmacy, you go and you collect over time a growing, you know, bucket of pills that you're going to take, a bowl of pills. And, you know, I got a bowl of pills. I got a, a, I got a pill case. You know, I travel with this. And as the day goes on, I go through the list. The difference is those are synthetically produced pharmaceutical chemicals. These are natural occurring molecules that are either in our food supply or in our body, and we benefit from having more of them. So which one's right? Which one do you trust? You have to try these things. You have to try different things. You have to find a centralized plan that you believe in or that you trust or you're willing to trust, and then give it time to work. What we're finding is people who choose option B and take natural ingredients and improve their diet and exercise uh, are, are slowly, oftentimes, able to wean themselves off of some of these medications. Now, please, with your doctor's supervision, if you try that, because they're the ones that prescribed it, and God forbid something goes wrong, they're just going to say, will you stop taking it? You know, they're not going to own up to it. But if they can say, oh, your levels stayed stable, maybe you can reduce, you know, your levels are better. That's what happened to Jerry with the podcast. His testosterone stayed up when he started NMN. Way up. Like totally healthy, normal up. And so his doctor said, you don't need this shot we're giving you. You know, you don't need this anymore. And a growing number of viewers are commenting with similar experiences. And this is important. It's, it's reinforcement. And we're bringing our doctors with us. Imagine this scenario. Enough of us go to our doctors and say, you know, my levels are better and I'm feeling better and I'm taking this NMN stuff. I heard about it, the polls, whatever. If doctors hear that often enough, it creates the likelihood, or potential at least, for them to say to other patients, or maybe they've got a relative or a close friend that comes in and is at the start of some condition, is getting some symptom, and they say, before, you know, and I've heard this from doctors, so it's not outside the realm of possible that through natural medicine we can find another way to get to our doctors. 
They may say, before I put you on this pharmaceutical, why don't you try this? And then we'll test you again. So there is this tendency, you know, they have this ability at times to go there. This is something many of us have heard from our doctors, but did you ever think about it? One thing I'll say is that I think the differentiation between that whack-a-mole medicine and a natural holistic approach is that it's systemic in nature. We're treating the entire system and individual acute conditions start to dissipate or can start or have in many cases dissipated over time. So I start a protocol based on David Sinclair and a few others, Vera Gorbanova, other scientists. I compile a protocol and I feel better. I begin to, I think, look better. I'm certainly performing athletically better, certainly for my age, which I'll be 60 at the end of this year. And individually, these acute conditions do dissipate, and they'd have for me. For example, high cholesterol, insulin resistance, pre-diabetic levels, everything went down. Fatty liver, vanished. Anxiety attacks, not having those anymore. No more ER visits. And uh, certainly allergies. How do you explain? And blood pressure stabilizing, and heart rate coming down, and being at a pro-athletic level. How can you explain these things? For me, it's a protocol. For me, my centralized plan is working for me. Now, I'm not telling you, you must adopt my centralized plan. I'm telling you to find yours. Find someone you trust and adopt their plan. Emulate it. Use it as a template, just like you do in Photoshop or any editing software. You get a template, a starting point, and then you can adjust it based on how you feel or your own experience or your budget or how much you're exercising and how much you can metabolize. Because I think that's a big, plays a big role in this. And then I think you should go back to your doctors and bring them along, kicking and screaming along the way so that they can have that opportunity to have those discussions, potentially with other patients who may have early onset pre-diabetic conditions where they go, before we go there, why don't you try this in the interim? It's, it's working for some of my patients. But if you're never that patient, if you're afraid to tell your doctor what's going on, you're not giving anyone a chance. We have to view them as humans and that care about us, that have obviously studied long enough. Most of them do. They don't just care about money. They, they wouldn't be in the medical profession because that's not the most lucrative profession ultimately. It's gotten very expensive to practice medicine. A lot of doctors trying to get out of it and a lot of potential doctors not even getting into it, unfortunately. You know, when I had that little cold last week, you know, I did take a medicine. I took two aspirin. You know, historically, they gave us a couple of aspirin and we felt a little better. But it turned into, you know, it spiraled. Well, you need this, you could take this, you could take that. And here we go. And we don't, you know, what are the side effects of all those things? How much of those conditions we were treating created other conditions? A lot of what I do is not easy, but you can make it your new routine. It can become easy to intermittent fast. It can become easy to not go out and party till late in the night. It can become easy to say no to sugar. Believe it or not, it can. It takes three weeks to form a new habit what the science says, right? So give it three weeks. I, a loved one recently told me I quit sugar for 10 days. Can you go another 11? Try it for three weeks because those urges, those impulses, your body's going to crave it. You need time. You need to give yourself a chance, right? So yeah, the medications, doctors pat themselves on the back, in the general public, look at our doctors and they say, well, he's keeping us alive. You know, that's something, that's great. Look at me, I'm alive. And that's called survival bias. You don't know how many people aren't alive because they didn't make changes in their life. Well, we do know because we see people dropping like flies around us. Like, make no mistake, we've, we're all losing people close to us and we see it happening 
sadly, on a monthly basis, practically, especially when you're a bit advanced in age. You know, we got to connect those dots and say, am I really that much different than this person or that person or that person? And maybe being alive isn't enough. You know, alive to survive, maybe it should be alive to thrive. And the goal, you know, the, the goalpost has to move. And, you know, if you're not saying, I feel great every day, then maybe you need to call some of what you're doing into question and think about your centralized plan. And I'm not saying develop one. When I say you are your centralized plan, what I mean is find one and then personalize it as you can. You might not need so much of this. You might not need so much of that. Some people didn't even want to hear that. They want to be told the precise dosage, but everybody's different. I'm sorry. Might be 500 milligrams of NMN, might be one gram. Jerry Wills takes two grams. I take 1.5 grams. That's why it's in capsule form, 500 milligram per capsule or powder where you can adjust the amount till you feel right. And if you don't feel right, there's still something wrong. And if you felt great when you started, well, maybe the expectation that you'll feel greater is off the mark. Is, is going for something that's just not realistic. You know, you feel great, you feel great, good for you. It doesn't mean you can't take some things on faith or do some things on faith. It means good for you. <laughs> take yes for an answer. <laughs> if you're healthy, be grateful. If you're not, don't accept that. I'll leave you with that. You know, keep fighting. Don't ignore your doctors, don't ignore medicine. But don't ignore what's working for the people around you who are healthy either. Look at them, look at me, look at Jerry, look at whom, whomever it is you trust and say, okay, maybe I can do better and maybe I'm alive, but may, is that enough? Is that optimal for me? Anyways, good luck and I'll see you all soon.